Well, hello, good morning, and welcome. My name's Rob with the YouTube channel Here Today, Where Tomorrow. And with over 20 cruises across four cruise lines, I've compiled a list of the 15 things I think you must bring on your next cruise. Cruising is one of the absolute best ways to vacation, and although there are so many amenities, food options, entertainment, and things that you can do on a cruise, I've compiled a list of some of the things that will just take a little extra elevation to your next vacation. So I'm going to start with one of the most common things that I see people talk about, and that is power solutions. Now if you don't know, cruise staterooms are actually built outside of the cruise ship like a shipping container and then slotted into the side of the ship. And the one thing that most of them lack, especially those built before the mid 2000s, is power options. As a content creator, I have tons of cameras and things that I need to charge. So this is a near and dear topic to my heart because I have to have lots of power to charge all my devices. So there's gonna be a couple of options I'm gonna provide for you here. You don't have to use all of these, but these are some of the most important things. I am a CPAP user, and unfortunately, most cruise staterooms do not have a US household outlet anywhere near the bed. So, just picked up a 15 foot, very small, thin extension cord. So I can plug this in at the desk or vanity, which is usually where the power is located, and extend this out to the side of the bed for my CPAP machine. Now, if you don't necessarily need that, they have some of these smaller options. This is an Amazon Basic three-prong extension cord. I think it's six foot. One thing that a lot of cruise lines say is they allow for power strips or extension cords as long as they don't have a surge protector on them. I've been on many cruises where I'll bring something like this, which does have a surge protector built into it, uh, but no one seems to care, so I'm not sure that that really matters. But something like this, which has a couple of household outlets, it does also have uh, fast charging USB-Cs for some of those more newer devices. Um, this is by Anchor. I have, like I said, the Amazon Basics one. So there's a lot of different options that you could do for power. Um, but there are many, many out there. Again, I would try and find one that doesn't have a surge protector built into it, um, but that's just my opinion. Another thing you may find lacking in your stateroom is desk space. So I usually bring something like this, a command hook with the uh, proper temporary mounts. Uh, we wanna make sure that this is removable. You do not wanna do anything permanent. Please don't make the stateroom stewards have to work harder than they already do. Or, and this kind of goes back to them being built like shipping containers, magnetic hooks. Most of the interior walls, pretty much every cruise line that I've ever been on, the interior walls are actually magnetic. So you can take this, stick it to the wall, and slap your hat on the wall. So magnetic hooks, command hooks, any of those uh, for hats, bags, things like that that you can just get off the floor or free up some desk space um, because that is a commodity in a small stateroom, desk space. Now continuing on the desk space type, uh, bring a notepad. It doesn't have to be this big. You could bring sticky notes um, or you could do something like this. This is a whiteboard. So I usually bring this uh, and we'll put this either on the outside of the door um, because most of the doors are magnetic or at least the hallway walls are magnetic. Um, and so I can let people know, hey, we're going to the pool, be back in 15. So if you have a big party uh, or if you have people in your stateroom you wanna leave notes for and you don't necessarily have the Wi-Fi package or whatever, just grab some sticky notes or a notepad or something and you can just leave a note to let them know, hey, we're heading down to go get some guys burgers or something along those lines. Medication is very important to bring. I actually use this for my daily medication. This is full of medication currently. Um, this is something I found on Amazon and I find it is really nice to be able to take out the days that I'm going on a cruise and pack these away with all of my medications 
uh, as opposed to having a bunch of loose bottles and then trying to, you know, do all that stuff. Plus this just, it maintains my habit throughout the month. So I fill all of these for my monthly medication um, and this works out great. I just found this on Amazon. It was relatively inexpensive. Um, and then, like I said, I just pull out the specific days. Um, but bring your medications, of course, uh, and I would suggest putting your medications in your carry-on bag, not your check bag, just in case. Um, aside from that, any sort of over-the-counter things, Dramamine, okay? It's always good to have this on hand. Um, I like to tell people that ask, am I going to get motion sick or am I gonna get seasick on a cruise? Uh, you will not know you're on a cruise ship unless the cruise ship wants to let you know you're on a cruise ship, okay? Mother nature outside will let you know you're on a cruise ship. So if you're going through some rough waters, um, you may feel the boat rocking a little bit. Now, a lot of the newer ships, uh, as they get bigger, they displace more water, they have better technology to balance and uh, maintain that stability. The majority of the time you won't feel it. There may be times I've gone through a couple of tropical storms around hurricanes, et cetera, um, where this has been necessary. Uh, but the, for the most part, I, I don't use Dramamine or anything, but it's always good to have, whether it's the tablet form, some people really like the patches. Um, some people use the bracelets. I've never heard of much success with the bracelets, but I haven't personally known anyone that's done the bracelets for seasickness. Um, but any sort of over-the-counter medication, aspirin, Dramamine, Tylenol, Dimetap, things like that, that you may want to, you may have an allergy or something like that, you definitely want to bring that. Because something like this in wherever you're at, a port or, gosh forbid, you buy this on the cruise ship, it's going to be five times the amount. So, um, and that's going to go for sunscreen, toiletries, any sort of over-the-counter thing that you would want to bring, deodorant stick, all that stuff, pack away. You definitely put some of that stuff, definitely bring some of that stuff because it is gonna be so much more expensive on the cruise ship. Now, this depends on the cruise line that you were on, but I usually bring a lanyard. This is usually my lanyard here. It is just a black nylon rope with a hook on it. Some cruise lines will put a hole in the card. They will punch a hole in the card that you can attach this onto. So everywhere you go, you could have this around your neck. You could wad it up and stick it in your pocket. Uh, you can loop it around a belt loop so you're super secure and it won't go nowhere. Um, I actually use my lanyard a lot to hold cameras in place. Uh, if I have the 360 camera on a selfie stick standing upright, sometimes the wind will wanna knock it over. I'll actually take my lanyard and wrap it around you know, a, a post or something right next to where my camera is and hold that in place. So if the wind starts to push on it, it holds it in place so it doesn't fall over. So it's got, for me, it's got more than one purpose, um, but it is very convenient. Now, Carnival Cruise Line does a lot of punches. Norwegian does not. And so you can also buy one that's got a little sleeve. So you can put that in there. You could also carry around some cash, etc., with this as well. And this one does have a breakaway clasp here. So if you wanted to hand this to your bartender or someone you're buying something from that, so you don't have to take it necessarily off all the time. So you can attach this to a bag and then just clip it off when you need to. Uh, these were, this was bought on Amazon. It's got little compasses and, and anchors on it. Uh, my wife likes to use something like this. Uh, depending on the cruise line, whether you need a sleeve or don't need a sleeve, that's up to the cruise line. Of course, then there's some like Princess that has medallions and you don't have any sort of card at all. So that's pretty cool too. So we're about the middle of the list here. I just want to take a break and say thank you for staying this long in the video. If you like this kind of content, top tens, cruising content, or any sort of travel stuff, please subscribe to the channel for more. Uh, we are going to do a ton more of things like this. We're going to break down some different styles of rooms, the different types of rooms. Uh, we're still going to do a couple more of these top 10 things that we love about specific cruise ships, etc. So we're definitely going to be bringing a lot more to the channel. Uh, and we would love for you guys to join us. So go ahead, subscribe to the channel, hit that little bell notification so you get notified anytime we upload a video, like, comment, and all that jazz. All right, back to the video. Now the next topic is kind of a contested one. As you will see right here, 
Uh, I have a lot of cruise ducks. Uh, these are cruise ducks that I have found in the past. I actually have a pack of cruise ducks that I have packed here for my next cruise. Uh, here's one that I had found with some friends of ours on a cruise we had taken, little dragon ducky. Uh, for me personally, it's something that I can use to get my channel out there. Um, I will take uh, a card that's got my QR code on it and the logo, and I will take just a, a little clear ring and, and stick it around the neck of the, the duck. And so I got a little duck tag that's got our social media stuff on it. Um, but my daughter loves duck hunting, absolutely loves it. So uh, that's something that we do is, is we partake in the cruise ducks. So if you're going to do that, bring some ducks and, uh, and some you know tags for your duckies. And uh, oh, what luck, you found a duck. Keep or hide, you decide, you know? No hot tubs, uh, et cetera. But uh, we absolutely love the whole hunting for ducks. Earlier this year, we were doing a Mexican Riviera on the Norwegian Bliss, and uh, we ended up befriending uh, a couple of the staff, so much so that Madison, my daughter, and the staff were exchanging ducks that they had found on this ship, and then the staff had found many through previous sailings. Uh, and so it's like she was trading up for different different styles of ducks and stuff. It was it was really really cute. But uh, we we do love that. I don't usually do this because I don't really lay out during cruises. Um, there's too much. There's a lot of activities that I like to do, and so laying out in the sun isn't really one. But a lot of people bring towel clips, just big clips, kind of like a chip clip or something that clips onto the top of a um, chair out on deck that'll hold your towel in place. Now in the vein of laying out and just chilling, one thing that I love to do is bring a book. Uh, to me, books are awesome. They are a great way to escape. And what better way to escape than when you're already on an escape vacation. So uh, there are many places you can read a book. Um, many of the cruise lines have really awesome quiet spots that if you just take an extra second to find, you'll be able to find these really nice quiet nooks, maybe in the shade, maybe out on deck and there's a nice breeze coming through. Maybe it's inside in a corner near a coffee shop or something. Um, I just find that such a, a relaxing thing to do, especially if sometimes if you're going to a port that maybe you're not interested in going to, or if you have mobility issues and you necessarily can't get off at the port, uh, having a book to read. Um, and sometimes you're just on a longer cruise that may have a couple of days at sea and uh, you just wanna kill some time. I think a book is a, is a really good way and whether that's an actual book book or if you, you know, use a device to do a Kindle or something like that. My wife uh, has done a couple of books through Kindle and that's kind of nice to have, you know, a small thin tablet to bring instead of a bigger book. But, um, but yeah, I think a book is, is a great idea. Now this next one's more for me than it is anything else. I personally love coffee creamer. I love flavored coffee creamer in my coffee. Now, most of the cruise ships that I have been on have had okay coffee and they have the option of milk and half and half. On some MSC ships, I have seen the pump style French vanilla creamer, which has been nice located in the buffet. But for the most parts, especially in the main dining room, you will not find flavored coffee creamer. And so I just bring a box of my own. There's no one's ever said anything. And I find it to absolutely enhance my morning coffee sitting in the main dining room eating Eggs Benedict with a, a cup full of coffee creamer and a splash of coffee. That is the way I like to vacation. So it's funny, I actually wanted to protect this box because I was flying and then I was gonna travel and all this stuff and I didn't want it to get squished, compacted as it's going through TSA. So I found the closest thing I could find, which was a small plastic box that would kind of give it a little bit more protection. And that was a first aid kit box. And so I loaded this first aid kit box with my emergency rations of coffee creamer. And so we get on the cruise and I go to the main dining room with my first aid kit and I put it on the table next to me and the people next to me, I can see them see this giant it's not giant, but a big first aid kit. 
and you know big red box with a white you know white label and a red cross on it and they're like oh my gosh this guy must have a ton of medication and of course i open it up and it's full of coffee cream you know so they had a good laugh I, that's always a good anecdote at the table especially if you're sitting with a group of strangers at one of the community tables you pull out this first aid kit and they go oh my gosh this guy must have some crazy health thing and it's just it's because I like a lot of coffee creamer, so <laughs> little anecdote there. But honestly, I feel like this really does help uh, enhance my vacation. It's not a big deal, but uh, it makes a big deal, you know? It doesn't take up a lot of space, but it takes up a lot of space in my heart. Now, I'm going to say this because this and this is like a massive topic, but uh, you should bring a camera on your cruise. and. You would say, well, I have my phone. I will take pictures on my phone. And that is all well and good, but there is nothing that's gonna beat just a simple GoPro or action type camera. I have tons of different cameras that I bring for the YouTube channel, for different types of things, but something like uh, a GoPro that is weatherproof, waterproof, beat up proof, uh, you could do time lapses, you can do, you know, just recording, you could do pictures, things like that. Sometimes you don't want to take that thousand dollar phone with you on an excursion. So if you just do something like this, which you can find, this is a Hero 10. I think they just came out with the 12 or 13 or 110. I don't know what they're on now, but, but you could pick these up for just a couple hundred bucks and this will last you for a long time. And it's just, it's so easy to use. You push one button and it starts recording, okay? It's waterproof up to 30 feet, which is anything you're gonna get into. It's drop proof, shock proof. If you drop it and it shatters the lens, you twist the lens off and you can buy a different lens cover for it. So I highly suggest if you are doing any sort of water activity, which you're on a cruise ship, so of course you are. Um, aside from your phone, having this that fits in your pocket uh, just at your disposal is is really important. It doesn't have to be GoPro. It doesn't have to be, you know, a big name, DJI, etc. But just just a waterproof action cam uh, will get you some awesome, awesome shots. Especially kids in a splash pad, you know, or 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 playing in the water, or something like that. Uh, you never know. You never know when you're going to come up against something. We were in Grand Turk just doing a vacation day at the beach. Uh, at Bahari Beach and a gentleman walked up with a horse. I'll put it up here. I have a picture of my daughter sitting on a horse in the water at Grand Turk that wasn't expected. It wasn't anticipated. It wasn't, you know, and, and it's just, man, I'm so glad I had a camera to snap these photos because it just, that wasn't part of the excursion and it just happened that way. So it's great to have a camera that you can always have ready to take a video, a picture real quick that again, you could keep in your pocket and then go swimming with, you know, it doesn't, you don't have to use it because it's waterproof. So that's my two cents about that. I have tons and tons of cameras. I got cameras here, cameras there, cameras everywhere. I could talk cameras all day. If you wanna, if you wanna talk cameras with me all day, go to my other channel, that, that, that's where we talk cameras all day. Um, one thing I do wanna talk about is storage. Going back to the staterooms, some of the staterooms have really good cabinet storage with lots of drawers or a dresser or something along those lines. And then some don't. I was recently on a princess cruise with two buddies of mine and although the room was really nice, the storage was pretty bad. It had one small area for shelves and then a ton of hanging storage, which I was with two other guys and we were trying to figure out what we were gonna do and, and thank goodness I had seen a room tour that showed the closet. So I ended up going on Amazon and buying something like this, which just hung on the rack like that and gave me ample storage space to store all of my clothes as well as a couple of hanging things. And this bag even opens up. I've done a whole video on this bag specifically. I'll put a card up there so you could go check it out if you're interested. But something like this that fits in your suitcase full of clothes, I just pulled it right out of my suitcase and hung it up and I was done. I was unpacked in five seconds. I did pull out a few t-shirts and hang some nicer shirts up. But for the most part, that level of storage was so good. So do some research ahead of time and make sure that your stateroom does have ample storage for you. You just search on Amazon for your stateroom. 
uh, on the ship that you're on and, and you'll find a plethora of videos um, about it. But you know, make sure that you have ample storage. If not, maybe find the solution like this because it really did help on our specific sailing on that princess ship. Another thing I want to talk about, I did mention sunscreen earlier with the over-the-counter and toiletries and stuff like that. Um, something like this, which is a bit overkill because it is a massive hat, but I want you to know the sun is very mean. And especially if you're on a very long cruise, uh, you're in the sun for a long time. A lot of the activities are out on deck. You have a great day in the pool. You go out on the beach. Sometimes you don't realize how brutal that sun is. Now, I just got a haircut. And I will tell you that the, this part of my head has been covered by hair for a very long time. And so we were outside the other day at the Scottish Highland Games here in Tennessee. And uh, boy, oh boy, I got sunburn right there on the corners of my forehead. And uh, it kind of hurts right now. It's very sensitive still. Uh, so uh, this would have been a great thing to do. Hat, sunglasses, etc. This just, this, I, this usually just folds up. It's very small, it doesn't take up a lot of room, but I mean, it's a massive hat. I mean, this is a huge hat, it provides a lot of shade. So again, Amazon fine, 20 bucks, something like that. Depending on where your itinerary goes on your cruise, sometimes you might need a little bit of some air movement. So for me personally, I do like bringing a small fan. This is a rechargeable fan. It's got a light and a fan with a couple of different speeds on it. Um, it's just rechargeable real quick, small, easy. We do a lot of Caribbean, Bahamas, stuff like that where it gets a little warm. So having this just propped up to give a little breeze is kind of nice. Now we're getting towards some of the later things here. Um, a collapsible water bottle. Now. A lot of cruise lines don't want you to fill up this water bottle at a water station. Reason being, you put your mouth on this, they don't want you to bump that up against whatever the nozzle is of thing you're filling. But something like this just has a little rubber band on it and it's a just a simple water bottle, collapsible water bottle. Get a, get a glass of water, you know, and some, some places don't care, but some places do. But just fill this up with some water before you're, you know, gonna go walk around the ship. You know, something like this holds just enough for you to stay hydrated till the next time you can find, you know, some food or water or whatnot. And this fits in a real, you know, bag real easy, pocket, etc. cetera. Um, I, I think this is a great way to, to maintain your hydration it's super important to stay hydrated on a cruise like if that's one of the biggest things i could tell you on cruising in general stay hydrated and this is a great way to do it collapsible water bottles reusable water bottles stuff like that obviously i don't think a lot of people are going to be toting their stanleys all over the cruise so you know something like this works out really well fits in a bag real well and now as we're talking about the topic of bag something like this a go bag, a cross body bag, a day bag, something like this. Now, sometimes you may go into port and you don't wanna carry a bunch of stuff. So something like this that you can secure across your body, you could put your passport in if you need it, your ship card, some money, a camera, whatever it is. This is my go-to bag that I carry some camera gear around when I'm in port uh, because it holds a lot of my cameras real well. Um, this is this is great, okay? It takes up zero room in my suitcase. It's very thin, it compacts down to nothing. And when I'm ready to go out for the day, even on the ship, I can carry this around. That way I don't have to have my cell phone in my hand, etc. Or a pull string bag or something like that. You can kind of throw over your shoulders. Um, you don't always wanna be carrying a book bag around in port. Sometimes it's nicer to just have a smaller bag. So uh, I'm a fan of bags of bags and things like that. I have a big book bag that actually has a camera bag built into it that is removable. Um, I love that. I love having the versatility of that, especially for someone like me who kind of needs that versatility with having a camera bag, etc. So uh, that's something I, I really, really love. And lastly, I would say pack your patience, pack your kindness, pack your understanding. The staff and the guests, we're all trying to work together to have the best time 
they work their butts off on these cruise ships and, uh, and it would really go a long way if we packed a little bit of patience and understanding. There are some times that some things go wrong on cruise ships and it is outside of everyone's control. There has been so many times where I have gone during hurricane season down to the Bahamas, Caribbean, and we're going around a storm so we miss this port or we have to slow down and let the storm pass and or we have to make it up somewhere else or it's too windy for us to go into port. There's been a couple of ports missed because the weather would not cooperate and there was no way for us to dock. So sometimes those things happen. So you kind of uh, roll with the punches when it comes to cruising. I still do think it's one of the best ways to vacation and you still get the best bang for your buck. So these are some of the things that I'm going to be packing just here in the next couple of days. I'll be going on the Carnival Freedom, which is going to be super, super fun. It's going to be a sibling cruise with my little sister. I cannot wait for that. Uh, so stay tuned to the channel for that series. And then right after that, I'm going to jump over with PMB's Wide World of Ports and we are doing an Alaskan cruise, which I am super excited about. This was a last minute book. Um, my wife was supposed to have this big work thing that was going on and, and they ended up canceling that at the last minute. So we were able to jump on last minute and jump on this Alaskan cruise. So bucket list cruise, I cannot wait for that. I have dreamed of doing an Alaskan cruise uh, and we ended up getting it for a steal of a price. Uh, it actually worked out really, really well. So we're super excited for that. So tons of things planned for the channel here in the next little bit. I have tons of work to do now uh, and I am super excited about it. So thank you for staying tuned for this. I really do appreciate it. Um, my name's Rob with Here Today, Where Tomorrow, and we will see you there. If you like this video and want to see more, please head on over to the channel and subscribe. And if you want to get notified, ring that little bell. We upload new videos every week.